Hi, my name is Jonathan Gervasi, and I'm going to go over some of the uh, guidelines for some events and some really important things that you need to make sure you and your students are noticing and reading. That way you are the most informed about the event as possible and so that your students can ultimately do well at state and hopefully later on at nationals. Guidelines are going to hold all of the most asked questions. And so 90% of the time, the question that you're wanting to know the answer to can be found somewhere in that. So we have a couple of resources. We have the Oklahoma um, WASAP and the events at a glance that will help you exponentially, especially for those state competitions and those state things that we do just a little bit differently. And then you also can see a lot of the things like, what am I allowed to take in the room? What am I allowed to do beforehand? How can I practice? Um, what are What's the topic? What am I doing? All of those questions are gonna be found in the guidelines. So I'm gonna go over two good examples. Um, and I've chosen the fundamental word processing and global marketing team. So we're going to look through those and see um, some important things to notice in each of them. So first off, we're looking at global marketing team. So first off, it's going to tell us what a plan is. We're making a marketing plan, but what are we, what is, what is in that marketing plan? What are, what are our students going to actually write? So it's going to give you right here. It's giving, oops. It's giving us those areas of the paper. So essentially these are going to be your headers in your written document. There's also, this is gonna be listed in the style and reference manual. So it's gonna tell you, it's outlined in the style and reference manual. You log in, um, let's see if it lets me go without logging in again. It's gonna take you to, so you can click those links and you can go to secondary downloads. And then, or post-secondary, of course, if you're post-secondary, middle level, if you're middle level, it's going to be under supporting documents. And then here's our style and reference. So now I can go and look. And let's see our marketing plan. Here we are. And it's going to tell me what it should look like, what should be in it, all of those important things that I need to know before my students compete in this event. Now, if we go back to the guidelines, it's going to tell us who's eligible to compete. So this is a team event. So in BPA, we require a team to be at least two people. Um, and you most, and you're, you're going to have to participate at both parts of the competition in order to be ranked, the paper and the presentation. So then we have the important, or what I consider one of the most important parts. You have your topic. So you know what you're making a presentation and paper about. This event has two components. It has the uh, prejudged written paper, and then it also has the um, on-site presentation of the plan. So it's gonna tell you what your team, your students are needing to do. Here it is again, they're stressing the importance that it needs to match the style and reference manual. And there's also a rubric on how this event will be judged um, at the back of this. So here's how they're judging the paper. This judge is going to go through and check these boxes and give a score. Then we also have the presentation scoring. Again, they're just going to go through and rate the students on how they did. Here we go. So this is telling you what the students must supply. So you're going to have to bring your own presentation device, your own projector, your own uh, laptop, all of those things. If you're making a product display or prop or some kind of sample or promotion item, you're going to need to bring that. If you made posters, flip charts, you're going to have to bring all of these things. Um, you have to be able to do it solely by, you have to be able to set up solely by the people in the team. And you're going to need to bring all those supporting devices like extension cords or power cables, all of those things. And then they're going to tell you that there is not internet access provided at NLC. So if you use something like Canva, you need to make sure that that's downloaded before your students go in there because they're not going to guarantee that they're going to have internet access when they get there. Then you have this little disclosure statement. This is going to tell you what the event is intended to teach them, which is important to most of us as educators. And then here is going to be where a lot of our questions are answered. So we're going to see this is a pre-submitted event. So they're going to submit something before their actual competition. You're going to see the instructions for the submission. You'll get an email about it, and there'll be some rough instructions in here as well. It's going to tell us what we're doing. It's going to develop a marketing plan and then demonstrate some oral communication skills.
It tells us how many pages that we're allowed. It cannot be over 10 pages. It's telling us that it goes over 10 pages that those kids are not going to get a chance to be judged. And then it's going to tell us where we go to pre-submit and when that due date is, and this is in the case of nationals, when that must be uploaded. And it even stresses that this is this is the deadline for nationals. Your state or region, if we have it in Oklahoma, we don't, um, might have a different, probably will have a different due date. And they're going to get an automated email that shows, yep, it's uploaded, we have it, so that you know and you have that peace of mind. The member ID is going to be required for their submission, so you'll need to have that for them if you're helping them through it. They'll need to know that. You can't mail in or fax it. It has to be done through the membership system, and you can't upload multiples. Um, only one team member should be uploading this in this case, so you want to make sure that not every student is uploading it. And if you miss that deadline, there's nothing that anyone can do. Um, so students are not able to change um, that paper once it's submitted. That's locked in stone once you hit that submit button. And then you're also going to need to have one copy of the completed plan and work cited when you give the presentation. And that's any time you give this presentation. So the preliminaries and the final, you need to make sure you have a copy of both. There's little things like that that you need to make sure in this specification area. Every event has something a little different usually. So make sure that you are reading through all of these points to make sure your kids have what they're supposed to once they get there and they're not getting docked for anything like that. And then here's another important part for this event specifically. You need to make sure that they're not leaving anything like displays or gifts or anything like that with the judges. Only the required submissions, which would be the plan and the work cited, should be left with those judges. This is talking about copyright. And it's saying that EPA lets uh, students use their logo. And then here is another, some more important things. They're going to give you how they're um, evaluating them, the students. So they're going to have a technical score rubric and a presentation rubric that we've already went over. And then it's going to say they have three minutes to set up, 10 minutes to present, and then five minutes for questions. Um, and then it says they may, there may be finals based on the number of entries. So this is also important too. You're not going to ever get more time than this. So you need to make sure that you and your students know this so you can prepare for that. And then it's saying that each state is allowed three entries, which means that if you place top, second, or third, you're going to be eligible to attend nationals. Now we're going to go over fundamental word processing. So again, it's going to describe you a little bit about the event. It also says this event includes a, a separate certification component. So you need to be ensuring that your students are ready to take that, uh, I'm sorry, that exam once they are in the competition. Looks like they're going to be doing um, word processing. And if they pass, they'll be given 100 points on their final score, which I'll show you in the rubric later on. Again, it goes over the eligibility. It's going to tell us what our students or us need to provide. So pencils, cordless calculator, according to ACT standards. Um, and then you can have, this is really important for these kinds of contests, published or unpublished non-electronic written reference materials. So that's saying, it's a fancy way of saying, give them a textbook to take in there. Give them things that will help them do the things they don't know how to do off the top of their head. As long as they have time to look it up, absolutely please use those resources. However, you cannot bring in prior tests. So if you've bought the WASUP guides from National BPA, or if you use some of our regional um, tests that Paxton puts on CTU, Students cannot bring those into the room, but they can bring textbooks. They absolutely can and should bring the style and reference manual. They can and should bring those things in to help them. Again, it's going to talk about what this is teaching the students. It's going to tell us what we provide them as in BPA provides them. So we're going to make sure you have a computer, a printer, and paper, and whatever software we're evaluating you on. We're going to take care of that. Again, reference materials are allowed. I'm really wanting to stress this. And absolutely give your students that, uh, that support and make sure they have what is um, allowed for them to take in. And then we also have the length of the event. So it's no more than 10 minutes of orientation, getting them familiar with their environment, an hour of testing time, 10 minute wrap up, and they have 90 minutes for the certification. So it's very similar to the previous document that we went over, that's gonna let you know how long they have to complete their event. Every event will have a duration of some kind listed in these um, references, I'm sorry, in these guidelines. 
And then this one says that each state is allowed five entries. So that means that first, second, third, fourth, and fifth place students um, ranked from Oklahoma's state conference will be eligible to attend nationals. So if you got fifth place, you got to take it to Anaheim this year, as long as your sport, your school will support taking them. Um, so that's another really important thing to notice. Um, and for this one, this is only one page. So these are just some of the things that you should be looking for. There's a lot of other examples, but I wanted to give you an example of a prejudged event and a production event. That way you know what things to be looking for. Again, for the prejudged events, you need to make sure that you know when to submit those projects for your students if you're doing it or when the student needs to upload it if they're doing it by themselves. That's crucial because if we miss that deadline, there's nothing that National or, or Oklahoma BPA can do to help you in, those, in that circumstance. And then for the production events, one of the things that we see the most often is either students not bringing anything to support them, no um, published or unpublished reference materials at all, or we're seeing them try to bring in prior tests, which are just not allowed. So of course we want them to use something um, to help them. We, we don't know everything. Students aren't gonna know everything. And um, if we give them that opportunity to look something up, sometimes that can be the determining factor between whether they got first or second. So it's really important that we let our students know that they can take those things in as long as they're not a prior BPA test. And um, other than that, if you have any other questions, I would love to hear them. I know that virtual is not the preferred method, so I understand that this would have been probably a richer conversation in person. But with that being said, I would absolutely love to help you in any way that I can. My email is on the Oklahoma BPA website under SEAC members. I would love to help you if you have questions or if you have a question about a certain event that you'd like answered. If I can help, I would love to. But once again, my name is Jonathan Gervasi and I'm with Canadian Valley Technology Center and I'm uh, serving as one of your SEAC members this year. And again, thank you. And I hope you gleaned a lot from this conversation. So have a great day.